I was raised by my parents who split up and when I was three, raised up pretty good upbringing. Um, I quickly got into sports. Um, that was, that became my passion. Sports were always my passion growing up through school. Um, my mom uh, is a person in recovery as well. So that was my off the field struggle, if you will, was watching her struggle with her addiction. Um, my dad tried to be as supportive as possible, but uh, they were, I mean, they had their feud as well, but I think that's where the start of my struggle came. I used sports to take out aggression of the things I didn't necessarily know how to handle. So when I left high school, um, there were no handouts. There was no one that was turning the blind eye because of you know, the position that I had. Um, and then I was left kind of without real direction. Um, I went to SEMO, I was kind of down there, just, you know, I felt by myself, no direction. My mom, her sponsor, everyone calling me, you know, looking for an answer or support. Um, all I knew was that I just lost my true love at the time, which was football, and now had a real problem that I was being looked at to deal with, and I was angry. I have a very vivid picture of me being homeless in my hometown. Um, I'd been up for a little while, but I was sitting on the main street and I had gotten rained on all night. That next day, um, I had walked to the outer skirts of a park and just had broke down crying. Uh, I was crying and praying and hollering to the sky, you know, praying out to God like that I was just broke, completely broke. And I had went through a lot of tough times, but this was what I felt the lowest. Um, and I really surrendered that day. That, that day was, that's when things turned for me. I believe that there was something bigger that had a great impact on my life that was steering my life. Um, and I found some peace in that, in that day. Um, and when I was in that room that night was when I decided that I'm, I'm going to start living life like I used to play football. Um, when I was in group, I kind of, I saw something that was exciting to me. I saw, it was Colton Baker, um, and he was running that group. I was excited, it was fun. Um, I saw that he was young, that I could really identify, I could really relate with him. Um, one, after group, him and I had started to meet individually. Um, and I kind of had told him what my previous experience had been. Um, and he had made a suggestion, you know, of transitional living, more specifically recovery house. Um, and that Colton had made calls to the two family members that were willing to support the cause for probably the last time. Um, and he went around himself and, you know, collected the rent money for the initiate, you know, initial fee. Um, and when I was discharged from SEMO, he took me up there personally to recovery house. It takes someone to come in and advocate for you to help you believe in yourself, um, to tap into some of, you know, like I discovered myself in that process. Mm -hmm. I discovered that I, I was able to do it. Um, that, you know, some of the things that I dreamed of doing of were not impossible. Having a hope fund in my name, um, well, I would be forever grateful for. I would be forever grateful because it represents like eternal giving. It's something that can be funded and then given, funded and given. Um, and if there's one thing that I want to leave behind is that it was a, a legacy of, of love and a legacy of selflessness. And I feel like a fund um, in my name would represent that. I want the Jordan Hampton Hope Fund to represent the extra effort. I want it to represent uh, the seed, the seed that gets planted and that's the difference. Um, I want it to be something that of continuous giving. Um, I believe that this can be something that forever will be a difference maker uh, long after I leave this world.